Once again, we have two more shows before the holiday season. So final two weeks now. We've got a packed couple of weeks coming up now. Really exciting with what's going on at AB1GK. Tonight I'm going to be... Evelyn, uh, join me at 10 past 7 this evening here on Instagram Live. Looking forward to talking to him about his season so far. He's already won a trophy. The first endorsee for ab one GK to get his hands on a trophy so far. We have had a really busy weekend with Black Friday orders at AB1GK. It's kind of an overlap of last week, Cyber Monday. So anyone that's got orders in the system, things are a little bit slow at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, the postal service is really slow. Everything has gone out. So if you did order over that weekend at AB1GK online, your orders will be on their way to you very soon. Um, today's show, we are going to announce the winner of our competition. We had a lockdown competition, your best saves. So I am delighted to announce the winner at the end of the show. So if you did enter, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show this evening, where I will be announcing the winner of that competition. Thank you all very much for the entries. As with every show, I like to kick it off with a roundup of what the AB1GK goalkeepers have been up to across Europe and a, a little report that we do weekly. It's on the website, but I'm also going to go over it now as well. What a fantastic weekend pack with action for the AB1GK family. Asmir Begovic was first up on pitch Friday evening live on Sky Sports. And what a great night it was for Asmir. He played his 300th league appearance in England and the big man decided to celebrate in great fashion. Asmi has been in fantastic form this season and his AFC Bournemouth side cruised past Barnsley 4-0 with Asmi being in top form, making some critical saves during the game and he deserved his place in the team of the week. Congratulations Asmi on that wonderful achievement. For the fourth time in five matches, Wickham Wanderers won a point. Ryan Allsop was between the sticks and his teammates drew with Preston North End. They conceded after just 14 minutes, but pulled one back through Gareth McCleary and the start of the second half. They went up, they went 2-1 up. However, with just three minutes before the final whistle, the host equalised through an unlucky own goal by Jason McCarthy. It was all about celebration from Malmo FF over in Sweden, where they closed the curtains on the Osvagen 2020 season. Malmo FF defeated Ostersted 4-0 at home, where our very own Marco Johansson kept another clean sheet. This was the first league title for the 22-year-old Swede. We are delighted for Marco, who's been wearing AB1 GK this season, and we're very proud to have him a part of the AB1 GK family. Budimir Johansevic and AIK ended their season with yet another draw. They played out a 2-2 draw with Augsburg. Chris Maxwell was once again captain for Blackpool, who this weekend visited the in-form Fleetwood Town. They ended up winning 1-0. Congratulations to Chris and his Blackpool side. Jay Lynch was between the sticks this weekend for Rochdale. However, they lost at home to Lincoln City 2-0. Almost nine months since spectators were allowed inside the stadium, they were back at the Ivovet Stadium at Harrogate Town with James Balshaw between the sticks, unfortunately, they lost 1-0 to high-flying Forest Green. Deliella, Boras, Victus and Stella are still the only side over in Serie A in Italy with no wins. This weekend, they visited Cremoso, only to concede twice in the early stage of the game and lose 2-0. That wraps up the weekend report for the AB1GK family. And what a weekend it was. A massive congratulations to Asmir on hitting that wonderful achievement. And it's great to see our boss in such fantastic form. I'm sure he'll be joining into the show 
as well this evening. I'm wearing my AB1 Glove Bank t-shirt this evening, a very special edition that I've put together for myself. I want to promote the AB1 GK Glove Bank. We are overwhelmed with the gloves that are coming into the bank. Please do keep them coming. And if you know of a good home to put these gloves to, please do contact us. We have been contacted all over the world. Um, we've had contact from Africa today and there are many, many um, charities now looking to get involved with the glove bank. So that's super exciting. Right, we are gonna be joined shortly by Connor Devlin who will be here very soon. As soon as he is, we're gonna be asking him some questions and chat about his season. Um, they are high flying at the moment. So he is here and he's gonna join me very shortly. Let me know when you can hear me, Connor. Hey, how are you? Connor, how are you doing? Thanks for yeah, joining good, me. Thanks. No problem at all. How's it going? You're right. Yeah, good, good. All good over here. I'm delighted to have you on the show this evening. Um, you've been in unbelievable form. Um, uh, you unbeaten at the moment? Uh, yeah, we're unbeaten. Uh, cup competitions and in the league. So I think it was two draws. Uh, but it's gone well so far. Mate, it's been quite the start. Um, there's some fantastic stats that I've got on you as well. You've won your first um, trophy as well, uh, the, well, the club has, since 1987. Larm beating Northam 4-3 uh, in a shootout. Y yourself with two massive saves in that penalty shootout as well, Connor. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't the best of games. Uh, there wasn't much, much action at all throughout the 90 minutes. But uh, luckily, it was straight to penalties and... and... You know, a bit of luck, and we, and we got through, and and uh, we're delighted, delighted for the whole club, delighted for the whole town, and it's uh, it's great, great to be a part of at the minute. It was three three when you made that crucial save, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, uh, penalties, penalties went all my way. So uh, you know, we did yeah. a re did a research of Alan Blaney as goalkeeper coach, uh, did his research, helped me out, and uh, and it came up trumps. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about how you prepare. Did did you prepare with the thought that it could end up with a shootout? Yeah, definitely. I think I think every goalkeeper does now when they're in cup competitions and finals. Uh, we we did our did our homework. Uh, we're lucky enough to have all. Uh, I think Glen Torn were were in a penalty sh two penalty shootouts. I think in the in the last nine months. So uh, we had the takers and stuff, and and uh, just a quick glance before the penalties, and and we came we came out uh, on top. You nearly saved another one as well. You come very close to, I think it was the second penalty, was it? Yeah, yeah, got a hand to it. It was a strange one because the, the, the Lions woman was stay on your line, stay on your line so much. And even the first penalty, I didn't, I didn't go the right way for that one. And she said I was off my line anyway. So, you know, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have, have mattered if I had saved it. It would have been retaken. But, uh, so it was a wee bit strange. But, uh, you know, lucky enough, as I said, to save the other, the other two. Was it was it nerve wracking the penalty shootout? Uh, it was a strange feeling, uh, obviously because it's behind closed doors at the minute. So you know, there's no fans. Uh, there was it was just it was dead eerie, and uh, you yeah. know you could you could hear the the teams up at the halfway line sh uh, trying to g me up and stuff, and and that was about it. But uh, as I said, it was nice to get it over the line, and and good for the club, and good for everyone uh, in the time that we got our first trophy of the season, and hopefully we can kick on. How many fans would have attended the cup final? It had, had fans been allowed, do you think? Uh, the definitely uh, maybe three thousand fans, two and a half thousand fans, or something like it's that. A lot, isn't have, it? It's a lot for our league, and, and it, probably we would have filled out the sea view where it was. Uh, and it's 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 just a wee bit bad that we we didn't have the the, the Lauren fans in who who have went through a lot of difficult times in the past and, and went there to see us do it. But I'm sure when when the time's right uh, and and hopefully the rest of the season will go well and we can all celebrate together. Yeah, definitely. There's some celebration to be had. You're flying high in the league as well. You're being touted as the challengers for the for the league. I know Kenny Bruce has tried to play down your chances at the moment, but <laughs> how, how are you feeling? Are you guys feeling confident? Yeah, obviously, you have to be confident. I mean, we're unbeaten. Uh, we're on a good run. Uh but it's it's still way too early to even talk about any sort of league situation or, or anything along those lines. 
Uh, with a big game Friday night, we play the favourites in the league, the, the, the massive favourites. You know, Linfield have a uh, uh, um, a great squad, uh, a yeah. great team, and and have obviously a lot of experience in it. So we'll just we'll we'll get over Friday night. Hopefully, we'll come out with a win, and we'll, and we'll see where that'll take us. You're coming out of a cup final and having that absolute high, you know, you, you go through all those emotions. You, you you've won, you've had your celebration. Is there a bit of a do you feel a bit, you know, is that kind of almost that bit of downtime where you kind of reflect on it and kind of like you've got to pick yourself back up and go again in the league? Is is that quite a challenge? Yeah, it definitely was for us on Saturday. Uh, you know, the high of Wednesday night and uh, we started the game awfully, not, not, not very well on Saturday. Uh, we were a bit sloppy. Um, but that was the come down from, from Wednesday and, and good teams can do that. Good teams uh, can can do it on the big stages and, and, and the smaller so so called smaller games as well. And luckily, uh, a last minute winner on Saturday uh, got us over the line. Uh, yeah. so confidence should be high going into Friday night. No, definitely. I look out for that Friday night and the, the viewers as well. Look out for the game. Is it is it televised anywhere where where, where our viewers can, can choose yeah, to watch it's, it? It's it's on BBC BBC two A and I. Uh so it's it's live on T V. Uh so it should be a good good game. I'll check that out as well for, for definite. I, there's an amazing stat that um, I was given today. You've kept 42 clean sheets in the last 100 games. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's Obviously, unbelievable. Yeah, that's it's a good start. <laughs> yeah, it's a good start. I wouldn't be one for stats myself. And, and it's someone sent it on Twitter. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic achievement and I'm really proud of it. Uh, but as someone pointed out, uh, you know, I think half the games were, were played in the championship uh, in a different league. So I, I hope I can just continue the form in the, in the Premiership. You have a clean sheet as a goalkeeper. That just must breathe confidence for yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, good run of form and hopefully it'll continue. Now, awesome. Can I go back to the start of your career and just give the guys a little <laughs> bit of an insight how you've worked your way through to the, to the level you're at? Where did it all start for you? Uh, growing up, growing up over here, I was never never into soccer at all. Uh, I was into Gaelic football, and uh, it's it's a bit of a mix uh, between soccer and rugby and stuff like that. So it was all involved catching and kicking, and and from there I got into goalkeeping, yeah. uh, and started to enjoy it just like every other kid, and and played as much as possible, and played for my local boys team, uh, and I was lucky enough when I was. I was I was a striker for the local boys team, but I was lucky enough that one day the Eddie Coulter, the Manchester United scout, was at the game, and I just happened to be doing doing nets that time. I was goalkeeper because our yeah. goalkeeper was sick, and and he said that he thought I had a chance of being a goalkeeper, so invited me to Manchester on trial, uh, and never really looked back from there. Wow! Do you remember at the start? Do you remember your first pair of gloves? First pair uh, goalkeeping gloves? No, I'm sure. I'm sh- Back then, I'm sure Eddie Coulter at Man United sorted me out with some some form of night gloves or something like that. But at that stage, of I was I wasn't even wanting to be a goalkeeper. I I, I was a striker. It's what I wanted to do. And you've uh, fallen upon it, haven't you? Yeah, and it just hit me hit me like a train. And and Eddie Coulter, God rest him, uh, just pushed me to it and pushed me to it. And and it's 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 served me well so far. Yeah, you enjoy being a goalkeeper. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, enjoy it day in, day out, and it's, it's what I do. So, How many times are you training a week, as a week? Are you, you, you in training sort of four or five times a week? or? Yeah, so, so Lauren and I are the, a full-time, full-time setup in, in our league, and one of only two, I think, that are, are full-time. Uh, so we'll be, in, we'll be in five times a week uh, at least. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good prof- professional setup. It's, it's as good as... Uh, you know the the couple of lower leagues in England, and and it's only going to get better, and we're building from strength to strength. So, hopefully, we can we can keep going that way. So, for the for the viewers that don't know much about your league, how, how many teams are are in your division? There's twelve twelve teams in our division, yeah. uh, and they're just based from all around all around Northern Ireland. Uh, it's 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 it's. It's a small league, but it's a good league. There's a lot of good players. Good standard, in it. isn't it? From what I saw yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Of late, there's, if you look at the Northern Ireland uh, international team, I think there was six or seven in the in the last international team that all played in this league and all came from this league, and and that's it's a brilliant. It's brilliant to see, and 
every year now there's a couple of players that are outstanding in our league get chances to go to England and and uh, they've taken it really well. So it's 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 a good light shone upon us over here. No, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's great to see you doing so well. Could you give some of uh, well, a lot of young viewers tuning into this show? Can we give them? I want to get some top tips from you as a professional to make it as as a professional. What is the the biggest bit of advice that you could give to a young goalkeeper now that's striving to go all the way? It's it's work hard. It's it's hard work, and it's as simple as that. Any young goalkeeper. Uh, you know, when I was 16, 17, 18, I thought I was working hard. Uh, and I, I, looking back now, I wasn't. I wasn't working anywhere near hard enough to be at the level uh, in England or the Premiership or Championship. And I think that's a, a massive difference. It's something I learned, uh, something that I've taken on board now and I continue to do now. But as a kid, it's just keep working hard at your game and, and every every opportunity you get, make sure you're giving it your all. No, that's good advice. Connor, there's some nice um, comments coming in. Best keeper in the league, um, someone's just said on, on the feed. It's a mm-hmm. nice comment. Um, I, I watched back the highlights of the, um, of the, of the Cup final um, today, actually. I watched it on YouTube. And I, and I, was, I was impressed. I thought the standard was brilliant. And, and you also yeah. played really well as well. Um, rest of the season for you, obviously, you're pushing for that league, that league title. How, how many more games you got to go? It's a long way to go. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't tell you how many games, as I said earlier. It's it's just all about the next one, and and you're ch- you're trying to just keep the confidence high and keep winning games. And if if there is seventy more points to get, you know, just just aim for that and aim for that every game and aim for the three points every Saturday and and see where it takes you. Uh, yeah. But I think this year being a wee bit different with COVID, I think the league might run on a wee bit longer. So I'm just hoping that that us being as, as professional as we are, uh, we can we can uh, not have as many injuries as other clubs and, and our fitness yeah. levels will, will, will come up trumps and, and hopefully uh, we'll see where we are then. I get loads of questions that always always get asked. Professional goalkeepers, how many pairs of gloves would you go through in a season, Connor? Uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you, actually. I couldn't tell you at all. I'm sure... 29 games to go, by the way. I've 20, just 29 <laughs> games to go, yeah. That's 29. a lot of games, isn't it? 29 pairs of gloves then, maybe, wow. yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, maybe around that, that, that number of pairs of gloves this season, uh, but not too much. No, definitely not. Um, that, that's awesome. What, tell me what gloves you're wearing as well. For maybe one gk what's your chosen glove this year? I know you've, the... you've tried them all, haven't you? You've tried the yeah. whole <laughs> Indeed you, right? Yeah, yeah, it's for pictures early, and I think I had a picture in every pair of gloves that we're doing at the minute. So, uh, but the cup final ones, I had the red or the Galacticos, or is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, the Glasgow's with the red palm. Galacticos, yeah, them? yeah, they've been amazing. The, the the comfort in them is the first time I tried them on, I was like, wow, these are these are great. Uh, that's a big thing that I would look for in gloves is just how tight they are and how comfortable they actually feel in your hands. And and as long as I'm comfortable playing in the game and playing in the gloves, that and then I'm I'm good. No, it's nice to hear the good comments. Um, there's a few more bits coming. I've got a question from Ben Thomas that I'm going to read out to you if that's okay. Question, there's been more young goalkeepers getting opportunities during the recent matches behind closed doors. In your opinion, Connor, do you think that giving a young goalkeeper a debut like this will help? It's a really good question, actually, Ben. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely a great question. I think I think it will definitely help. Uh I know, I know. In, in our league, you're always very close to the van, the fans, and the fans are very verbal at you, and and the, you know they they don't really care what they say or how they're trying to put you off. And and if they're not there, you've you that's out of the equation, and you don't have to listen to it. You can just solely concentrate on your game. Uh, so definitely for young goalkeepers, uh, yeah. And even in our league, there's been a few who who have got their chance as well at the, at these times and. It's a, it's a good thing to see that there's a lot of young goalkeepers around getting their chance at clubs. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really good question, that. Is there, a, is there a particular goalkeeper that you look up to um, as a professional? Is there anyone sort of over here in England in the Premier League you look, look at or, or across Europe? Any standout goalkeeper? You may maybe model your game on slightly. Um, none that I would really model my game on. I think at, at Lauren now we we play a lot of football and we play out from the back and we drop our centre backs in. Yeah, and we we play a lot of football. So having to be good with your feet is just part of being a goalkeeper now. And and I think uh, I, I've uh, to date I've, it's been a, a good positive uh, feature of my game. And 
And uh, so the modern day goalkeepers now are all totally different. And and uh, there's so many good goalkeepers that you couldn't possibly just pick one. I think if you had a little bit of everyone's game, you'd be some keeper. Yeah, you've got to be good with your feet now, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. As as I said, it's it's. I think I some some days I feel like I make the most passes in our team, which is <laughs> which is insane. But uh, you know I'm used to it now. And and when you when you try and break the lines and try and get through the front two, uh, it's it's a, it's as good as feeling for me now as saves. No, I've got another question here for you, Connor. Um, Finley's asked, "What's the best save that you have ever made throughout your career? What's the best? Your standout?" Um. In my last club here in the Irish League, I always remember making a save. Uh, I think it was at, in the Irish Cup semi-final, uh, 2013 or something. It was it, it was a standard enough save down to my left, but I think we broke up the pitch and scored. And I think those are the ones that really have a wee bit extra in them. You know, when, when the game can turn on its head from a save to winning the game, uh, those are the ones you remember. And, and that's uh, definitely one that sticks. I've got another one coming as well. Some good questions coming. We've got loads of viewers tonight, by the way. This is a really good show, actually. Um, we've got 43, what, 44 watching us live now, which is brilliant. It's just my um, family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got another question. Um, what's been your career highlight so far, Connor? I think when I was 16, as I touched on, going to Manchester United was a dream. I think it's any kid's dream. Uh, you know, and going over there on a scholarship and eventually turning pro was... It's, it's, it was an unbelievable experience and, and I took a lot from it and looking back people say they have regrets not staying in England after being there and I I fell totally out of love with the game and I think uh, there were so many highs and so many lows when you're a, goal, a young goalkeeper now coming through mm. and uh, uh, but I think coming home and playing over here was definitely one of the highs and and Going at sixteen and coming home and winning trophies over here, it's been a, it's been a great career, and, and I hope it continues for another few years yet. Now, well, by the sounds of it, you're at the right club that's going places. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. There's an, there's another question coming from from Tony. He said, uh, in today's um, era of football, are sure to goalkeepers able to make it as a pro? Pardon, pardon, you cut off. He, he said to me, in today's um, football. A shorter goalkeeper is able to make it as pros. Yeah, definitely. I, definitely. I know, I know I'm not playing in the English Premier League or the Championship, but I wouldn't be the tallest goalkeeper. I think, uh, I think it's turning a bit being goalkeeper. You look back years ago, everyone just wanted to be the biggest and strongest. And I think now uh, being agile and being good with your feet has as much impact as those, as those goalkeepers. And, and coming for high balls, just, the centre backs help you out an awful lot, and the, the defenders help you out in crosses and stuff. And when you can't come, you stay, but you're able to make the saves, you know, because you're maybe a wee bit quicker and more agile than the bigger boys. And I think it's just swings and roundabouts, but definitely there's more opportunities for for the smaller goalkeepers nowadays. No, it's good. It's good to hear. Um, I've got a couple more questions before you go. Um, just before we wrap things up, um, what's your greatest? Uh, we've had greatest achievement. Um, we got. What's the feeling around your team at the minute after winning the County Antrim Shield and your current league position? We kind of touched on it earlier, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. As I said before, it's fantastic. Everyone's buzzing at the minute. Uh, um, but you know, everything we've done today at Wednesday's out the window now. It's forgot about. And yeah. uh, Friday's the big one, so we'll see how we get on. You're the first goalkeeper that's endorsed by AB1GK to get their hands on the trophy, by the way. So congratulations <laughs> yeah. on that. Thanks very much. No, you're welcome. I've really enjoyed having you on today. Um, you've been absolutely brilliant, Connor. You've answered loads of questions. We've had people tuned in from all over Europe, Italy, um, yeah, everywhere. Um, Bosnia, we've got people joined in everywhere. So, and you've given us a great insight into your career and what you're up to at the moment. I want to wish you all the best of the rest of the season, Connor. Thanks very much. Uh, Thanks for having me on. It's been great. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll be tuning in Friday night, did you say, yeah? It's Friday night. It's probably half seven or so. Uh, Cordia kickoff at BBC One Northern Ireland. Uh, so I'm sure it's on Sky it. somewhere. Going to yeah. find it. Thank you so much for your time this evening. No, no problem. Thank you so much. Stick her. Best wishes to you. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. A massive thank you to Connor, who has joined me this evening. It's been brilliant. Talking to him about his career and what he is, uh, what he's been up to. Um, 
yeah, been, been an awesome chat, that one. I'm going to finish up the show now. I've got a couple of exciting things going on here at AB1GK that I want to bring to you. We have to announce our competition winner shortly. But before I do do that, I want to show you a brand new Christmas set that we have that's just going to go live on the AB1GK website later on this evening. We have some special edition Christmas packs that we're going to have. And they are really, really good. That We have bundled together some products for you. Um, and we're going to offer a 30% saving. So you're going to get an awesome saving. So you're going to get with it a AB1 water bottle. This is the Hex Retro Christmas bundle number one. This bundle number one. So you're going to get a water bottle. You're going to get a glove key ring, a glove towel, which is awesome. Really good glove towel, microfiber towel. You get an AB1 goalkeeper cap. And you also get a pair of Hex Retro gloves from the Undici line. The pack is available. It's a brilliant Christmas gift. Mums and dads, tell your mums and dads, this is a brilliant gift pack for you guys. Awesome pair of gloves. They're starting at a size four as well. Right the way through to 11. So we're catering for everybody. The Hex Retro Xmas bundle, adults, is 54.92. Juniors, just 48.62 48.62 for all this is a brilliant bundle for Christmas it get you well underway there are other Christmas sets available on the AB1 GK website, take a look at those under goalkeeper gloves they have just gone live this evening so make sure you, you grab those and, and, and take a look the offers are only available for the next couple of weeks so the pre-run to Christmas they are available. Right. Compet Everyone wants to know who the competition winner is. So I am going to get you the competition winner. It's going to be really difficult to show you the save that I want to show you. But I've put it in front of Asmir Begovic, Tom Heaton, David Coles, and all the team here at AB1GK. So everybody that works within the brand has voted on, on the winner this evening. So you are going to win. The winner is going to win a signed Asmir Begovic t-shirt. So I've got a t-shirt which I'm going to show you that you're going to win. The winner will get. So this white t-shirt with Asmir's signature on it. You'll also receive a couple of player postcards. I'm going to get one of these signed by Tom Heaton. I've not done so yet, but I will get Tom Heaton to sign a player postcard. Asmir signed me one last week. You'll also get edition two of the AB1 catalogue. If you would like an AB1 GK catalogue, make sure you drop me an email, martin at asmir1.com, and I will mail you one of these out. No worries at all. And now is the time to announce the winner. We were overwhelmed with the amount of videos that we had sent in to hit us here at AB1 GK. And the winner is going to be, I've got it all here, is Jake Crick is our winner. I'm going to try and show you the um, save that he made on my iPad, which I put there a little while ago for you. So I'm going to show it to you if I can. I'm going to do my very best to show it to you anyway. Um, here it is. If I can get it to work. Let's have a look. Here we go. We hope that you'll be able to see this. I'm going to get my cameraman to tell me if it's in, in screen. Can everyone see that okay? Want to come back a little bit? There we go. Right, we're going to play the save. And it is a brilliant save that he's made in training. An awesome save. What I'm going to do is at the end of the show, I'm going to put it in the story so you guys can see it as well. Massive congratulations for you, Jake. I'm going to be in touch with you very shortly to grab all your address and all your details. Chosen glove of your choice, plus those goodies I had a minute ago, is coming your way this week. And I want to see a picture of you with all your goodies when you get it later this week thank you to everybody that took the time out to enter and for everybody keeping in action during this lockdown too it's good to have everyone back in action once again now football is back and next week i've got another competition that i'm going to run it's a pre-christmas competition it's our final show next week before the festive period and there is a really exciting comp competition that I am going to announce so 
make sure you tune in to my show here on Instagram next Monday at 7 p.m. where we will kick off another competition, which is probably the best competition that we've ever run at AB1GK. I would like to thank you all for joining me this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've loved having Connor on as, as my guest. And thank you all for joining and sending your questions in. Apologies if I didn't get to everybody. I did my best, but we were overwhelmed this evening. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great evening.